Good morning and welcome to Daily Prayer on this Thursday 25th of March 2021 and the church is celebrating today the Annunciation of our Lord um, when Mary conceived Jesus by the Holy Spirit. Our readings today, oh no, you can email me, uh, pass your comments on, say hello. Uh, good morning to everyone that's there already. If you're in the background, yeah, just say hello. Uh, it's nice to know you're there. Uh, and we can pray for you. I can only see the names of people who comment on here. Um, I'm Colin, and um, I'm priest in charge of the Last Dreams Churches. We are, uh, it's an exciting day today. We're starting our studio project at two o'clock this afternoon. If you are um, around then live or you can watch it uh, later of course on YouTube trying something new uh, more about that at two o'clock today our readings today are uh, not following on um, as usual uh, we're doing some 111 uh, and instead of Jeremiah we've got 1 Samuel 2 1 to 10 and then Romans 5 12 to 21 O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. You laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of heaven and earth. To you be praise and glory forever, as your living word, eternal in heaven, assumed the frailty of mortal flesh. May the light of your love be born in us, to fill our hearts with joy, as we sing, blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, blessed be God forever. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, who has clothed me with the garments of salvation and has covered me with a cloak of integrity. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with jewels, for as the earth puts forth her blossom and as seeds in the garden spring up, so shall God make righteousness and praise blossom before all the nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until her deliverance shines out like the dawn, and her salvation as a burning torch. The nations shall see your deliverance and all rulers shall see your glory. Then you shall be called by a new name, which the mouth of God will give. You shall be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem in the hand of your God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. As the night has passed, the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. It's a beautiful sunny day this morning here in Southing. Not a cloud in the sky. Just put the bins out. Also, I had a lamp here yesterday. I knocked that over and broke the bulb. So another new bulb is coming on the way. Um, so that will be back in a day or two. Um, Psalm 111. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Hallelujah. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart, in the company of the faithful and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, sought out by all who delight in them. His work is full of majesty and honour, and his righteousness endures for ever. He appointed a memorial for his marvellous deeds. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He gave food to those who feared him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He showed his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are the truth 
and justice, and his commandments are sure. They stand fast for ever and ever. They are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption to his people. He commanded his covenant for ever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have those who live by it. His praise endures forever. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Gracious God, you are full of compassion. May we who long for your kingdom to come rejoice to do your will and acknowledge your power alone to save through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So 1 Samuel 2, 1 to 10. It's Hannah's prayer. Hannah prayed. That's a giveaway, isn't it? Hannah prayed and said, My heart exalts in the Lord. My strength is exalted in my God. My mouth derides my enemies because I rejoice in my victory. There is no holy one like the Lord, no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. Talk no more so very proudly. Let not arrogance come from your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty are broken, but the feeble gird on strength. Those who were full have hired themselves out for bread, but those who are hungry are fat with spoil. The barren has borne seven, but she who has many children is forlorn. The Lord kills and brings to life. He brings down to Sheol and raises up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low. He also exalts. He raises up the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes and inherit a seat of honour. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and on them he has set the world. He will guard the feet of his faithful ones but the wicked shall be cut off in darkness. For not by might does one prevail. The Lord, his adversaries, shall be shattered. The Most High will thunder in heaven. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the power of his anointed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And Romans 5, 12 to 21. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man and death came through sin, and so death spread to all because all have sinned, sin was indeed in the world before the law. But sin is not reckoned when there is no law. Yet death exercised dominion from Adam to Moses even over those whose sins were not like the transgression of Adam, who is a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if the many died through the one man's trespass, much more surely have the grace of God and the free gifts in the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for the many. And the free gift is not like the effect of one man's sin, for the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation, but the free gift following many trespasses brings justification. If, because of one man's trespass, death exercised dominion through that one, much more surely will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness exercise dominion in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, just as one man's trespass led to condemnation for all, so one man's act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all. For just as by the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. The law came in with the result that the trespass multiplied but where sin increased, 
grace abounded all the more. So that, just as sin exercised dominion in death, so grace might also exercise dominion through justification, leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reflection today is on verse 19 from Romans 5. The many will be made righteous. Today we celebrate the feast of the Annunciation, a foretelling of the Incarnation and the announcement by Angel Gabriel to Mary that she would give birth to God's Son. The Bible passage is Paul's theological underpinning of why Christ's coming was necessary. With the events of Holy Week just around the corner, these verses provide a link between the birth narratives and those that tell of Jesus' death. Paul's is a dense thesis in which Adam and Christ are compared. One bringing sin into the world through disobedience and the other reconciliation through righteousness. Adam and Christ represent choices about what kind of existence we desire, one that ends in death or one that leads to eternal life. If it is the latter, we must journey into next week when Christ's obedience will take him to the cross, from where he will transform violence to gentleness, hatred to love, and death to life. The gift of life, Paul stresses, is free for the taking. It's an invitation that we can only accept in trust and faith, and it doesn't promise an easy path. Gabriel's message to Mary was also an invitation to which she responded, yes. Her journey was full of suffering. But still today, Mary is a reminder of how often we encounter Christ, most forcefully when we are most wounded. And it is then we discover the true value of the new life that he offers. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we come before you, we recognise um, sometimes when we make the wrong or inappropriate choices, we also recognise, Lord, that all of us at different times will experience suffering. God Jesus, may it be in those times that we are open to you, to your love and your great compassion and mercy and grace. May we accept Jesus afresh today, that grace and that freedom that invitation to receive eternal life. Wherever we are, whatever we've done, whatever difficulties we have, may we, through those difficulties, find you more uh, closely, more intensely. And Jesus, we may not understand all that uh, Paul's dense theology, but we can have that relationship with you and we can understand and we can have that knowledge and we can commit ourselves to you um, as much as our understanding allows. May your spirit commune with our spirit and soul. May we exalt you, Jesus, our Lord and our God. 
lift you up with our praise. And Jesus, we come to you and pray for the people who are on our minds and on our hearts. Pray for those who are having difficulties. Pray for those who are ill. We pray, Jesus, for Sue. We lift her to you. We lift Charles to you. And John and John. Pray for David. I think as um, back in hospital. Pray for those people on our hearts, Lord. We call out their names to you now. Lord, through their suffering, may they come closer to you. So they receive your grace, your mercy. May they know you ever more closer that they would have an inner joy. That you would bring healing in uh, whatever that may mean for them. Jesus, we pray for our churches, uh, groups of people that worship you and exalt you and honour you. We pray that we would be effective in our mission for you, that we would be places of grace and compassion and honour and, and majesty and, and, and worship. There's nothing that we can do without you, Jesus. We pray that your spirit will be upon our churches, St Stephen, St Seth and St Peter's. Also for the churches of anybody watching here today. Pray for the churches in East Ham, St Paul's, Mary Plale, Obi Chike, Keith Bone, Philip Burgess. Pray for the Diocese of Bangor in the Church of Wales. Jesus, we pray for your church and the communities in which your churches serve. May your churches be led by your Holy Spirit. We offer you this studio project again today. We pray, Lord, that you would, as you provided uh, the equipment and uh, the inspiration, may you use it in these coming days, weeks, months and years um, to minister to many people, to bring your grace and compassion, your message and freedom and life to many people. Pray for the Garden Project at St Stephen's as well. Pray, Lord, that um, we'll be able to finish getting that garden ready and be able to use it this summer for, um, for great effect to minister to people who have been struggling and suffering throughout this pandemic. Lord Jesus, for projects of all the other churches and so many different things. All doing it for you, for building your kingdom. We beseech you, O Lord, pour out your grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of your Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion we may be brought to the glory of his resurrection, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, 
who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. So that concludes our daily prayer uh, for this morning. Um, if it's sunny where you are, get out there, um, go for a little walk, or get out into the garden, or um, make the most of the opportunities that God uh, gives you. Um, looking forward to uh, the studio. If you want to get on there today, um, there is a Zoom link. If you go on our website, you'll see. Uh, a studio poster there with the uh, zoom link on it um, I'll put it on the Facebook page as well in a bit oh yeah it's on the it's on the Facebook page already uh, but we'll repost it um, so you can join in it's meant to be conversational it's meant to be interactive uh, we're experimenting with something new and we'll see how it goes uh, today um, and in the next few weeks have a good day. I'll be back uh, not only two o'clock, but then uh, eight o'clock tonight for another night reflection. So God bless you. Um, may he be with you. Remember that compassion, that love, um, and that eternal life that he has given you uh, today. So rejoice in that. God bless you. Grace, mercy, and peace be with you all. Amen. Bye.